This podcast is about the general wear and tear allowance on movable assets. This allowance is claimed on assets used in the taxpayer's trade, which does not qualify for any other deduction or allowance that can be claimed for it. A typical example is computers, vehicles, furniture and so on. This allowance can be claimed for new or used assets. The calculation of this allowance is based on the write off period as provided by the general binding rule number 7. This provides the number of years over which the allowance will be claimed. It's very important to know this allowance is apportioned. This means that if you only use it for a number of months during the year, you can only claim it for that number of months. Small items that are capital assets of less than 7,000 Rand can be claimed in full in the year that it is purchased. So these items do not need to be apportioned or to apply the general binding ruling number 7. Let's look at an example. The company has a year end of 31 March 2016. It buys computers with a cost of 30,000 Rand and brought it into use on 1 October 2015. General binding ruling number 7 determines that the computers are written off over 3 years. So if I plot this on my timeline, I can see that I've brought it into use on 1 October, which is in the year of assessment that I'm busy with, but I've only used it for 6 months during the current year of assessment. And that's why I will apportion it for this current year. So if I calculate the capital allowance, I take the cost of the asset and I divide it by the number of years determined by the general binding ruling, which in this case is 3 years. And because I've only used it for a portion of the year, I multiply it by that portion, which is 6 over 12. This gives me the capital allowance that I can claim for the 2016 year of assessment of 5,000 Rand. If I look at another example, the year end is the same, but I brought the asset into use on 1 October 2014, which is in the previous year of assessment. So I plot this on the timeline and I can see that I brought it into use during the 2015 year of assessment and that's why I would have claimed a portion in the 2015 year. But when I work out the 2016 year of assessment allowance, I would have used it for a full year, so for the full 12 months. And that's why when I calculate the capital allowance for the 2016 year of assessment, I will divide the 30,000 Rand by 3 as previously, but I will apply this allowance for the full year. In other words, there will be no apportionment. And that's why I will claim the 10,000 Rand for 2016. If I look at another example, my year of assessment is still 2016, but I brought the asset into use on 1 January 2013. So in this case, I plot every year of assessment that I've used the asset for. When I brought it into use on 1 January 2013, I've only used it for 3 months, for the 2013 year of assessment. And that's why when I calculate the 2013 allowance, I will take the 30,000 Rand, divided by 3, and then apportion it for 3 months. And that allowance is 2,500 Rand for the 2013 year. If I look at my 2014 and 2015 year of assessment, I've used it for the full year. And that's why I don't need to apportion it, but I claim it for the full 12 months. Now, when I get to the 2016 year of assessment and the allowance that I need to calculate for it, I can see that I can only claim for a 9 month period during this year. Although I've used it for the full year, I only have 9 months left of the 3 years that I can claim it over. And that's why when I calculate the 2016 allowance, I will apportion it with 9 over 12 months. If you look at the 3 months plus the 12, the 12 and the 9, it all equals the 3 years over which this asset can be claimed. And that's why when you bring an asset into use in a previous year of assessment, it's important to see whether you've maybe claimed it in full for this year or if only part of it can be claimed still. Remember to use a timeline when you calculate capital allowances to ensure that you do the correct calculations. Thank you.